Hey guys. Hey guys. Hi everyone, so we're going to wait a couple minutes for all to join us and then we'll start. So just make sure you have all your supplies ready in the meantime. And this is what we're painting today. Yeah, in a couple minutes we're going to go through all the supplies that you're going to need for this. All right, guys, one more minute and then we'll start. Woo yes. So many of us here, that's awesome, guys. All right, let's start. So welcome everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Vera. I'm gonna show you today how to paint this. This is pretty abstract, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, you guys can change your colors if you would like. Here I have black and white and red and yellow. That's pretty much all the colors that I'm using here. But if you would like to have your umbrella not red, but any other color, go for it. If you wanna use maybe any other color instead of red as a highlight color that's totally fine too or if you want to get rid of um sorry instead of yellow if or if you want to get rid of yellow completely that's totally fine as well uh as always i'm going to be using primary colors i have primary red i have primary yellow black and white what else but if you have pre-mixed colors that you would like to use that's no problem as i mentioned before you can totally Use any color that makes you happy. Don't have to stick with those colors. So what are we gonna need? We're gonna need a canvas. I will be using the same size, it's pretty big. It's 16 by 20 inch. That's what I'm gonna be using. You guys can go with bigger or smaller, totally up to you. I would say uh, the bigger the canvas, the longer it's gonna take you and the harder it's gonna be. So if you'd like to have it a little bit easier today, go with a smaller canvas or smaller pieces of paper. You can definitely use paper. It doesn't have to be canvas at all. Next thing you're gonna need is some water. I have my water right here. Then we're gonna need a couple of brushes. I will be using three different brushes, large, medium, and small. In my case, my large and my medium brush are square and a small is pointy. And another thing I'm gonna be using, if you have a piece of paper, maybe like a piece of cardboard, uh, maybe an old business card or something along those lines. You can grab that because we can use that for scraping. If you don't have that, that's not a problem. Uh, we can definitely do without it. But if you have one, that would be great to grab it. What else are we going to need? We're going to need a cloth or paper towel. In my case, it's a reusable fabric cloth. And uh, something to mix our paint on. And quite a few of those plates laying around that I'll be using for mixing my paint. You can grab anything that you would like to mix your paint on. Um, what else, what else, what else? And that's pretty much it. That's all we're gonna need for today. Now let's go through the breakdown for this painting and see how we're gonna do this. What, are we, what we'll start with is a background. So we're gonna do white in the middle and then some grays from the top and the bottom. So we're gonna darken up the top and the bottom with a gray. After that, um, we will position our umbrella. 
because we don't want to go with the black underneath our umbrella. So we're going to position our umbrella and we'll put the first layer of color onto our umbrella. Then while our umbrella is drying, we're going to go around and we're going to add a bit of abstract black on the background and it's going to be, it's going to be messy, but it's going to be great. After that, we will add the silhouette. So this is a person who is like, this is a lady who's like holding this umbrella like this and there's hair. So that's what it is. For those of you who are wondering what this is, this is a person. This is hands, shoulders, and hair. But you can do anything you want, for sure. Like you don't have to stick with this precisely. After that, we're gonna add a second layer on our umbrella. We're gonna add some black, some white, some splatter, and we'll finish up with yellow light light yellow highlights and some white it's going to be a big big mess guys and it's going to be very abstract and it's not going to make any sense half of the time but then it's going to look really great in the end rachel i miss you too all right so if you are ready grab your canvas grab your cloth or paper towel whatever you're using sorry biggest brush or a cloth whatever you're using dip it in the water in my case i'm gonna go with a brush today so i'm gonna grab my biggest brush dip it in the water and i'm gonna wet the whole canvas in this case i'm gonna do vertical brush strokes just because i'm gonna continue going with vertical brush strokes for the actual painting so you might as well Gonna wet the whole canvas and don't be afraid of water make it really really wet if you're using a really small canvas you don't have to do this or if you're using paper instead of canvas you don't have to do it either but if you already did it not a mistake at all And guys, once you have it, put two colors on your palette, black and white. I'm going to grab a different plate. Let's grab this one. I'll put some black and white paint on it. And now I'm going to grab my large brush again, dip it in the water. And then I'm going to grab lots and lots and lots of white on it. And I'm going to go right in the middle of my canvas. And in this section, this middle section, about middle third, I'm going to add a whole bunch of vertical brush strokes all across. And keep dipping your brush in the water. Every time when you run out of paint, dip it in the water before you refill it with paint. And you don't have to have a solid coloring. Just a couple brush strokes is more than enough. Just make sure you're generous with how much white you're using because we need to have this stay wet before we start adding gray. You don't want it to dry too fast. Now to answer your questions, do all videos stay on the page? Well, all videos that we do through Facebook Live will stay on Facebook for a few weeks and after that we'll move them to YouTube. All videos that we do through Zoom or YouTube are not going to stay on Facebook. Um, yes, if you guys use using paper, not canvas, you can, but you don't have to wet it. Only if you're using canvas. For people who are using canvas, you have to wet it, especially if it's a large canvas. If it's a really tiny thing, you don't have to wet it either. 
But if you're using paper, you don't have to do it. I would say it's totally doable without wetting, but if you already wetted it, it's not a big deal. So now we're gonna start doing gray from top and the bottom. So you're gonna scoop some white in the side and add a little bit of black. You're gonna make about medium gray, I would say. And with this color, water it down a little. And with this color, you're gonna start flicking brush strokes from the bottom. Uh, sorry, from the top with your large, large brush. You see, I'm not doing up and down. I'm doing mostly just down, down from the top and so on. And what do you want? You want them to go a little bit lower on the sides and a little bit, uh, be a little bit shorter in the middle. So you're gonna do that for the whole top. You see, flick after flick after flick after flick. You see, this one's right in the middle at the shortest, and as you go closer to the sides, they get longer and longer and longer. And another thing I'm gonna do right away is I'm gonna color this top edge with my gray. And I'll take a couple of brush strokes on the edges on the sides as well. And I will give you guys a couple of minutes to do this. And once you have it, let me know and I'll show you next step. Yes, to answer your question, do we apply white paint or not? Absolutely. So we applied water and then we added brush strokes of white paint on this midsection as a blending backdrop for only for the blending purposes. That's why we did it there. I'll give you guys another minute. Now, guys, for those of you who's first time with us, welcome. So glad you're here. Um, just to give you a couple things, um, just to explain how this goes. This is Facebook Live event. It's free participate, so we're really happy you're joining us. The video is going to stay up on our Facebook page for a couple of weeks after this is recorded. This is live right now. But once the recording is done, the video will stay on our page for a few weeks. So you can definitely do this later as well. Or if you can only stay halfway through today and want to finish it tomorrow or over the weekend, you will have ability to do that. And then after a couple of weeks, maybe about a month, I would say, um, we will move this video to YouTube. So we're going to delete it off Facebook and we'll upload it onto YouTube where it's going to stay for a very, very long time. So yes, you will definitely get a chance to do this at a later date as well. Now guys, as soon as you have this top, we're going to do exact same thing on the bottom. So we're going to start flipping from the bottom, the same gray. So if you run out, make a little bit more. It doesn't have to be a perfect match. As long as it's similar color, you're all good. But if you still have a bit more of the same color, you just use good for you. You can use that exact same color. You see I'm flipping from the bottom now. And the same thing, the flicks in the middle should be a bit shorter. And as you go towards the side, you want them to get longer and longer and longer. All right, my whole top and the bottom are done. Oh, and guys, don't forget to make your brush, to keep your brush wet. You don't want your brush to dry up. Once your brush dries up, it's harder to work with it. So make sure you dip your brush in the water once it gets too dry and then dip it in paint. So that's what I do. 
soon as I run out of paint, I'll dip it in the water, then into paint, and then I'll go on a canvas. Also guys, I forgot to mention something. If you um, need a bit more time, what you could do, you could rewind this video. So Facebook, even though we're still live, it's still recording, it gives you ability to just rewind this video to a certain section and rewatch it again. So you are welcome to use that as well. And once this video is gonna be fully recorded and on Facebook, you're gonna have ability to pause the video as well. So if that's more of a style that you would like to work in, um, and have the ability to pause the video at any time. Just wait until it's recorded and then you'll have that ability. I am using gray paint here and here, light gray. Now once we have this light gray on top and on the bottom, we're gonna add a little bit of a darker gray. So to the same gray you just used, add a tiny more smidge of black. Make it a little darker. It doesn't have to be crazy dark. It doesn't have to be like black, but it has to be darker. And with this, we're gonna flick more brush strokes from both top and the bottom. Just make sure with the second color, you, use, you add less paint than what you did in your first color. Cause you don't wanna color everything that you did in your first color. You just wanna add dimension and you wanna add different shade of gray here. You wanna make it a little more interesting. That's why we're adding the second shade of gray here. And I will continue this right on the top edge as well. And I will do the exact same thing on the bottom. So as, I, as soon as I have this couple brush strokes on top, I'm gonna move on to the bottom and I'll flick a little bit from the bottom as well. So ta-da, background. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes to finish with your grace. And once you have your grace done, we're gonna move on to the middle and we'll sketch out our umbrella and we will put first layer of color onto our umbrella. We're going to do it in a couple layers just because I find that it's much, it gets brighter if you do it in a couple layers versus just one layer of color. So that's why we're going to do it in a couple layers. But we'll start with just one. And once you guys have it, once you have your gray, just give me a thumbs up. So I know that you are ready and I will show you our next steps. All right, I see some thumbs up. That's great. Done, yes. Awesome. Awesome, 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 guys. Sure, Mary, no problem. If I don't, remind me. But yes, I'll do that. All right, so we have lots of thumbs up, which is great. Now, 
we're gonna sketch our umbrella. You see our umbrella is pretty giant here. So it goes from one side to another side. There's maybe like an inch to inch and a half from each side that is um, not touched by umbrella. But other than that, it goes almost from side to side. So what are we going to do? We're going to decide where the top of our umbrella is. And you can sketch with anything that you would like. If you have a pencil, you can sketch with pencil. If you don't have a pencil, you can sketch with either red paint or gray paint. I would probably recommend using small brush and sketching with gray paint just in case. That way it will be easier for us to cover up any mistakes. So maybe even with lighter gray, the lighter you go, the easier it's going to be to cover up lines that you don't want in the end. So I'm going to start by deciding where the top is going to be, and it should be somewhere in the middle, somewhere right here. So just put a dot there. Wherever your middle top is, put a dot. Here it is for me. Now, we're going to put two lines on the sides. One towards this side. Do you see I started with one line? And it's about an inch or inch and a half right here. That's where you go. That's the end. And then try to mirror this image onto the other side, this, the same line. If you can. If not, that's not a problem. And you don't have to do it right from the first try. You have ability to put multiple lines until you make it right. It's kind of hard to make it right from the first try. So if you take a couple tries and you don't get it right from the first one, not a big deal. All good. So I have two lines here. This one goes to here and goes to here. So I mark them with um, just the darker dots for you to be able to see it better. And after that, we're going to put two more lines to divide this into three chunks. So the middle chunk clearly should be the biggest, and the side ones should be smaller. So I'm going to start by positioning my second line somewhere around here. And of course, it's going to go a little lower. And then I'll mirror this line to the other side. So line, then mirror, then line, then mirror. And after that, we're going to put lines in between to make it look like an umbrella. So I'm going to go a little higher. I feel like this is a little too low. So I'll start my lines, connecting my lines somewhere around here. So I'll connect the middle first. And then from here, I'm going to connect to the side and again I'm going to bring it a little higher I think my original planning was a little off which is fine as I mentioned you guys don't have to get it right from the first try it's mission impossible you give yourself ability to make mistakes that's why we're using a compatible color that we can cover up later on if something goes wrong which something will go wrong so do you see this two points are a little lower than this two points so this ends should be a little higher than this ends. And here's the sketch of our umbrella. So make sure you leave some space for humans as well here. You don't want to completely run out of space for humans.
And once we have our umbrella sketched out, you're gonna move either to big brush or medium brush, whatever you're more comfortable with. And you're gonna grab your paint. You can either use straight from the bottle red, you can use any shade of red if you would like, or you can mix your own red. I think I'm gonna mix mine a little because my red is more like a pinky red and I want it to have more like a fire truck red. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take two colors. I'll take red, primary red and primary yellow and I'll mix them all up a little bit to make it a little bit more orange than what it usually is. So I'm gonna scoop some red, scoop some yellow, mix them up. You see, it's still red. It's just oranger red and that's what I want versus pink or red. And I'll put first layer on my umbrella. And don't avoid those lines. Go right over them. Unless you're really afraid to lose them, then you can avoid them, but I wouldn't recommend avoiding them either way. All right, I have my first layer of red, yay. So I'll give you guys a couple more minutes to do this, no rush at all. Yes, orange is a great color too. Whichever you want, you can do it pink, you can do it yellow, you can do it orange, you can do it purple, any color that you want for this umbrella, it's all good. And guys, when you have it, let me know, and I'll show you next steps. Okay, how is everyone doing? Do we have the red umbrella?
Okay, I don't see anyone saying thumbs up or done or good to go, so I'm gonna give you guys a couple more minutes. Done, thumbs up, yes. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, so we're gonna let it dry up for a little bit. Right now, we're not gonna do anything else here. This is good for us. Uh, we will add more colors and shades and everything else on a second layer. This layer, just let it dry. So while that is drying, we're gonna go on to surrounding area and we're gonna add a lot of abstract pieces. So let me show you this one closer. Um, to show you what is going on here. Do you see there are just some vertical brushstrokes made with a brush? There's some vertical brushstrokes made with a brush and spread with like our cardboard. I'll show you how. There are some tiny little swirlies with a small brush. Do you see? There are some things that look like building. Let's say this is CN Tower, for example. Do you see there are some that we turn into buildings? They look like a building with a lot of windows that we're going to add later on. So it's like a cityscape really going on in the background with tons of all kinds of abstract elements, mostly just lines and brushstrokes and swirlies. So we're gonna start with everything that's biggest and then we're gonna make our way down to smaller things. So make sure you have some black paint on your palette for this. And remember I told you that we might use something like a business card or a piece of cardboard. For me, I have this um, piece of paper that I used for making that beautiful flower that we're gonna have in October as a free event actually to making this beautiful paper roll. So I use this paper. So we're gonna grab a piece out of it. I'm quickly gonna cut out because I don't have any business cards right now on me. But if you have a business card that you're never gonna use, grab a business card that will give you per it will be perfect tool for you. If not, any piece of paper or cardboard like this works perfectly fine. And alternatively, what else you could use? You could use a point card. We all have lots of points cards that we're never gonna use. So grab one of those, it'll be perfect. So we're gonna grab our brush. You can grab big brush, small brush, medium brush, any brush that you would like. I'm gonna go with a big one for now. So I'm gonna grab this big brush, black paint, and in a certain spot, I'm just gonna add a little bit of black paint and quite a blob. So I'm not adding a touch, I'm adding a blob. So this is good for now. Not, I don't wanna add all of it right away. Now, while they're still wet, I'm gonna smudge them. So do you see using this card, not like this, you don't wanna use it like this, you wanna use it like this on the angle. Do you see, pretty flat to the canvas, not like this. If you use it like this, it's gonna scrape your canvas and you're not gonna see. So let me show you, if you use it like this, it's gonna scrape it. If you use it like this, it's gonna drag it and give you this texture. That's what you want. So using it pretty flat, I'm gonna go all over those things that I just added and drag them. You see it gives me different texture here, which is what you want. Actually, you can even use more paint, and if you drag it with more paint, it's going to give you even different texture. It's all about a variety of textures here on this painting. So this is one of the textures that I'm going to be adding. You see I did quite a bit of it here, but don't overdo this. You still need to have more space that's available for other textures. You don't want to have one texture painting. Now I'm going to add a quite just a, bit, a little bit of this on the bottom as well. And middle, I'm not gonna do anything there because my person is gonna be positioned here. You wanna have two people, that's no problem to just leave that space available and edit maybe a little bit on the sides. So again, start by blobbing some black paint and then using your um, piece of paper pretty flat, drag it through.
Okay, I'm done with this piece of paper and put it away. And while I'm waiting for you guys to catch up, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of black onto the edges. So I'm not gonna add anything here for now, but I will take this brush and I will go right on top. I'll add some on top so my top doesn't look bare and on the edges of the canvas as well. Donna, me too, me too. And you see what it looks like? Generally, that's what the goal with this painting is. You wanna have the surroundings of your umbrella much lighter than the edges of your canvas. We're gonna get edges even darker as we go. But this arounding of umbrella, you wanna have fairly light because you want your umbrella to pop. You don't want it to lose on this heavy background. Doesn't mean it has to be white, but just don't pile as much black right around the umbrella. Okay guys, I'll give you a couple more minutes and whenever you have it, as always, let me know, give me some sort of sign, thumbs up, done, good to go, and I'll show you what's next. Get in there, that's good, that's good. Done, done, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Amazing job, guys. Amazing job. Now, let's add more textures on the background. You can continue with your large brush or switch to small brush. I think I'm, I will add a couple more brush strokes with a large brush and then I'll switch to small brush. So I'm gonna add a couple brush strokes do you remember I told you that we're gonna have those that look like buildings here? So that's what I'm gonna add. You see, I have a couple here that looks like buildings and I'll turn them into buildings later. So using the same large brush and some black paint, I will add a couple of those. So you're just gonna have a square-ish top. You see, you add the square-ish top and then you flick it down. You don't have to go all the way to umbrella, uh, but you can if you want to. You can add a couple of those. And then once we add white on them, they're going to start looking like buildings in the background. So a couple here. Let's add a couple on this side too. the Roger Center there, the circular building, and I will add, I'll switch my brush, and I'm going to add the CN Tower, so I'm going to wash off my big brush, put it aside, I'm going to grab my medium brush, or you can grab small brush, whichever works. I will use the top edge of my medium brush, and I'll put a CN Tower right here. It's hard to see it on that black, so I'm going to cover it up. I want to see my CN Tower, so I'm going to cover up the black section so that I can get my CN Tower more visible. Yeah, okay, that's good. Guys, you don't have to do it. All right, and that's more visible, for sure. So now I'll leave the top. Oh, no, 
Oh, and have a sand towel. And if you want to, after that, still grab your medium brush, but now dry brush a little bit black. So what you could do, take some black and then dry it up on a cloth on a paper or a paper towel with paint on it. And now I'm going to add more of um, transparent lines. So do you see how this line is transparent? That's what you want because I only have very little bit of paint on my brush. So again, different texture. We just built in the background out of different textures. Okay, guys, I am just catching up on messages here. Awesome, awesome. Yes, you can use palette knife if you have palette knife. Absolutely. Yes, let me show you the card trick again. So you grab a card and you blob the paint. So just like really blob it and then you smudge it. Smudge it using your card pretty flat to the canvas. So not like this, not like this. So it's um, on an angle. You want it pretty flat to the canvas. So you just scrape it down. But don't push too hard on it because otherwise if you push too hard, it's gonna be too flat. If you push lightly, it's gonna give you texture and you want texture. So now with this dry brushed, uh, with just a touch of black on our medium brush, you can add a couple swirly lines wherever you want them. Again, just another texture to add. You see, I added them in a quite a few places, this dry brush texture. And I'm gonna switch to my small brush now and I'll finish the black textures with a small brush. So now I'm gonna grab my small brush and we'll water down my black just a little bit. And with this watered down black, first I'm gonna start by adding something that looks like this on top of buildings. Remember TV antennas? Yeah, I'm gonna add a couple of those on the buildings. This one was gonna have circular one. This one is gonna be not circular. And then lots of swirlies. So I'm gonna water down my black a little more. And with a small brush, just add small swirlies and black paint. Wherever you want to just see by your paint and see where it needs it, and add them there. If it doesn't need it anywhere, don't add it. You don't have to have it, but you can. Right, I have lots of textures going on, so I'm quite happy with this. I am going to stop adding textures. I will we'll still add textures in white here. I'm not done with them, and I'm still gonna add black human here, and we will add um, black on an umbrella on the sides here. So we're not done with it. We're not done with black here. There's still gonna be a lot more black, but for now, for the background, this is good. All right, let me go through textures again. So the first ones that we added, do you remember the one that we scraped? What I did, I did wet my brush. You don't have to, but you can. Doesn't affect it whether your brush is wet or not wet, but you have to grab a fair bit of paint. So just blob it on top, put like a blob, and then grab the scraper, that business card or something, and drag it down. So you're gonna do that from the top down, from the bottom up. After that, the second one that we did, so those building looking brush strokes, 
those was just um, brush with paint on it. I did wet my brush before I used the paint. I personally wet my brush all the time. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's not a crucial step here. You can use a dry brush for this too. And later on for the medium brush, when I added swirlies, that was almost dry brushing. So again, you can just grab a touch of black on it. You don't have to wet it. I did wet mine, but after I added, uh, so I did wet it, then I dipped it in paint, and then I dried it with paint on it to get uh, the dry brush texture going on. And then third texture was just small brush with watered down black. I find that it's easier for small elements to work with watered down black. So I watered down my black and with that watered down black and a small brush, I added a little wigglies here and there. No worries, Mary, I'll remember. Uh, I'm using student grade acrylic paint. I'm using Start brand right now. That's the brand I'm using, but you guys can use any paint that you want. Whichever. It doesn't matter. Oh, and I'm using this one too for white. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. When you're ready, let me know. I did not add white to the red, no. No yellow yet. Yellow is going to be almost last here or last. Last or almost last. So not yet. Done. That's good. Awesome. Awesome job, guys. Okay. So now let's move on to second layer of red. So again, you're going to grab the biggest brush that you have. Um, again, I will mix my red because I don't want to have straight from the bottle. I want to have more like an orangey red. So I'm going to grab some primary red, add a little bit of yellow to it. And with this color, I'm going to go right over it and I will add second layer onto my umbrella just to make it brighter. Because I find that if you just do one layer, it's a bit streaky, it's not as colorful. But when you do two layers, it looks really, really nice. So you could definitely do this with one layer. It's not a big deal. It's my personal preference to do everything with two layers, especially such a bright color as red, because I find that it looks way more vibrant. So now we're gonna do it a little different. As soon as you put your red, which I just did, I'm gonna grab on the same brush without washing it, a touch of black. Did you see? Just a touch of black on the end of my brush. And while this paint is still wet, I'm going to flick some black right here. Following the shape of that line. Remember those lines on this side? And I'll do the exact same thing on this side, but from the inside. So here I did it from the outside. Here I'm going to do it from the inside. Again, I just grabbed a touch of black on the same brush. And it's very important that you do this while your paint is still wet. Because if it's still wet, it's going to blend and it's going to be nice and smooth. If it dries, it's still doable. It's just going to be a little bit harder for you to get the smooth blending. 
So just a few flicks here and there. And after that, we will add more black there. So this is not your final shape. This is just a little shadow that we wanted to flick while this is still wet. And after that, I'm washing off my large brush and I'm putting it aside. I don't need it anymore. And as always, once you guys have it, give me a thumbs up. All right, guys, after that, I'm gonna grab my small brush. So I'll grab that and I'll grab some black paint. Again, I water down my black paint. I find that it's easier to work with if you're using small brush. And I'm gonna add a little bit of definition to this umbrella. So I'm gonna add a couple darker brush strokes. You're not gonna outline the whole thing, but you will outline it with little flips here and there. So I'm gonna start by adding this middle top, middle, pointy thing and then out of it I'm going to add a couple flips toward each side. So flip here, flip there. So do you see I added a couple flicks on the outer side of umbrella? I didn't outline, there is no solid lines here, just a couple flicks. I find that it looks much better when you do it in flicks versus when you do it as a solid lines. And I'm gonna do the same with the, all the other lines, just a few flips here and there. You see, I added more flicks, flick here, flick here, flick here, flick here, a couple flicks, wherever. Really, whatever benefits the shape and make it look better and more defined, that's where you add it. There are no particular spots where you flicks have to be. And after this, we're going to move on to our humans. And I'm going to show you placing for one human versus two humans. find some sort of piece of paper to show you the humans on. Don't see a piece of paper, so it will have to be the back of my canvas. I'll show you on the back of my canvas. So let's talk about positioning our humans. Let's say, I'll show you two versions. Let's say this is our umbrella. for single human, and this is the edge of your canvas. 
So this is umbrella on a canvas. For one human, you're going to do this. So basically all the section you're going to color with black and then here we're going to add highlights. So those are hands, right? This is the elbow. What our person is doing, our person is doing this. Oh, I'm a little too short for this demonstration. Okay, this. You see, so it becomes this shape plus you can see you go up to elbow and then you see this part, right? So we're going to highlight this. We're going to highlight this a little bit and maybe something here a little bit to make it look like a person is holding it. So that's what you do. You don't really care about details here, just the outline and maybe a little highlight right here. We'll do it later. Right now, you're just going to do black. And if you later on, you want to add a little bit of hair, you could, but you don't have to. This is all very optional. Um, now, positioning for two people. Again, start with umbrella. So when we do two people, we can do them from the back. If this person is from the front, so we add in details, for two people, it's going to be too complicated from the front, and adding details is not going to make sense on a back, black background, so we're going to do two people from the back, and if you want to do two people, you can just do this. Well, it really depends whether you want one person hugging another or them just standing side by side, because if you want them standing side by side, you're literally just going to have two backs, right? and hands here. So this is two people from the back. One of them could have hair. You see? Two people from the back. Let's say this is our lady. She's going to have a longer hair and their hands on the sides. So all you see is this, right? You see the back and you see hand to elbow on each person. What alternatively you could do, again, let me show you third option here. That's funny. No, it's not a bottom. Okay, so and option number three. Don't mind my really cricket umbrellas. That's, straightness of umbrellas is definitely not the goal right now. So don't mind those. Okay. Option number three. So again, you can do two people. So it's person number one, person number two. But instead, you can make hand wrapped around the person. So do you see? And this is going to be your highlight. So all of that is going to be black. All and this lines are going to be highlight. So that's how you make it pop. Either one of those options is fine, totally up to you. This is front, holding hands. This is back, arm, arm, hair. This is back, arm, arm, second person. Um, no hair, I guess. You could add hair if you wanted to here too. To make it look like this is a long haired lady on our right here. This is our gentleman, or lady, I don't know, but just shorter haired person. Okay, so those are our options for humans. I'm gonna show you again. You guys can decide which one is your option for human. Option number one, option number two, and option number three. I am doing that single, well, this one, this one, this one, yeah, this one. So I'm gonna grab my medium brush. And black. And I'll color all of this with black.
And right away I'm going to add a little bit of hair on this side. And I'll just use the top edge of my brush. And I'll add right here. Just so I don't have to go back to them later on. Let's add everything right away. And then I'll move on to highlighting. So while my black is still wet, I'm going to wash off my medium brush, grab white, and I will add a highlight here with white. You want to do it right away before your black dries. You want this highlight to blend in. So it's important that you do it right away. You see I'm adding a little more highlight here. And another highlight I'll let right away is here. But now I'm going to switch to my small brush. Okay, awesome. Now we have our human. I'm gonna give you guys, all of you, a couple more minutes to do your human. No rush. And once you have your human and this highlight that you wanna put right away, uh, after that, go and wash off your brushes and change your water because next couple steps, we are actually, we're almost done. This is a very, simple in a way painting. It's hard to get the textures right, but it doesn't have a hundred million steps. So we're actually on the last couple of steps at this point. We're gonna add a white highlight to the background. We're gonna add a white highlight to umbrella. We're gonna add um, yellow highlight all over the place. And we're gonna add a little bit of splatter. So we're only using light colors at this point. So what you need to do is you need to change your water because your water is very, very dirty and it may work still well for lighter colors but for splatter dirty water is a big no-no so as soon as you have your person and get this highlights and it's all blended grab the brushes whichever brushes you use and go rinse them under running water and maybe with a little bit of soap and change your water as well and i will see you guys all in a minute because i am going to do the same thing i'm going to change my water and quickly rinse my brushes That's right, that is correct description. Our lady is holding umbrella like this and her head is like this under umbrella so you don't see it, you only see the elbows and whichever this part of the hands and a little bit of this section, so this section. Okay guys, change your water, rinse your brushes, I'll see you in a couple minutes.
I am back with my clean water. Yes, I can show you. So you see the couple, two options for couple. On this couple detail will be here, here, here. I'm gonna show you in red actually. I'm gonna grab red. This would be, so all this would be black. And this, this, this would be white. This, this would be white. So this is what's gonna be white on this couple. And of course a little highlight here. And if you're doing hair, some highlight on the hair. And on a couple number two, this would be light. So right in the middle, this, this, because they are from the back, right? Both couples are from the back. Oh yeah, that could be a boy and a girl standing closely face to face. Yep. Well, guys, options are unlimited. Wherever your imagination takes you. Okay, so after this, I'm going to take my medium brush and some white paint and I'm going to go on to those buildings on the background. Do you remember those that look like, well, those brush strokes that look like buildings and I'm going to add a couple flicks using my medium brush. You can use any other brush. It doesn't have to be medium brush for me. I just like this brush and I think it works well. So it's going to be this brush for me, for you, whichever brush you choose. You see, they make it look like windows on those buildings. That's what we want. We want to add a couple of those windows on the buildings. And then with the same brush and same white paint, I'm going to go onto my umbrella and very lightly. So here you kind of want to dry brush it. You don't want to blobs. On the background, blobs are fine here. Don't blob it. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight right here. As you can see, pretty light. And if your umbrella is still wet and it blends, it's not a bad thing. Actually, it's a pretty good thing. So don't be afraid of that. You see a little highlight here. You can add a little highlight here. So I added a little bit of highlight on umbrella. Do you see very lightly? It doesn't look blobby at all. And the way to achieve that, just don't take too much paint on the brush. And after that, I'm gonna wash off my medium brush, grab my small brush, and now I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of white on my small brush. And I'll add a little more highlights onto umbrella, but now with a small brush, with quite a bit of paint on it and really wherever you want them to be those highlights where you wherever you think your umbrella would benefit from having a highlight added there Done. I am quite happy with this amount. Don't want any more white. So 
So I'll give you guys a couple more minutes to do this. And once you have it, let me know in comments and chat here. And then I will move on to our orange and we're gonna add our, sorry, not orange, yellow. We'll add a little bit of yellow in surroundings and on our person. And then we'll move on to splatter. But no rush whenever you're ready for it. All right, I see some done, that's awesome. Yay, more thumbs up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. No worries, guys. Yeah, if you have to go, you will have a chance to catch up later. That's no problem at all. All right, let's move to our light yellow. So now we're gonna grab our small brush again and we'll make our light yellow. So we're gonna grab some white. I'll scoop some white on the side here. So grab a little bit of yellow, mix them up, make light yellow. And with this light yellow, I'm gonna go, um, and I'll add a couple brush strokes around the umbrella. Actually, I'm gonna go even lighter. This seems so too bright. strokes on the background. In my case, those are just more of a vertical breast strokes and wiggly line. So let me show you. Oh, do you see I went a little bit here and then a little bit up. And here I can just add a couple of those wiggly lines, but more vertically oriented. Same thing will go a little bit here. Then you can move it up. And if you want, you can add in a couple of places more like flicks like this. I'll add a couple of those in between my buildings. And now I'll move on to the bottom part and I will do that around my person around umbrella as well. Whatever you want, flicks, breast strokes, combo of wiggly flicks and breast strokes, all of the above.
Do you see? I added a yellow, mostly around umbrella, but then I spread it through different techniques a little bit further. So now it looks like my person and an umbrella are glowing because there is yellow, the super light yellow is right around. I'll add a couple more brush strokes here and there. And with the same color, I'm gonna go a little bit on our person. Remember those areas that were highlighted with white? I'll let a little bit of light yellow on those areas too. Just a touch. Awesome. And now guys, the only thing that's left is a splatter. And you can do splatter in either just white or you can do it in white and in light yellow. Totally up to you. I would say probably start with just white and see how it goes. And if after you've done white, you still feel like, yeah, my painting could handle more of it, go second round with light yellow. But you might feel like that's too much already because we already have so much going on in the background, right? And if you feel like this is it, you don't want more going on, maybe add a touch of splatter and that's it. Don't go too much with the splatter because splatter can ruin it for sure. So be careful here. I'm going to start with my large brush. I'm going to grab my large brush, dip it in the water. And then I'm really going to water down my white paint. So I'm going to go into white paint and I'm really going to water it down. And I will get a brush full of this really, really wet white paint. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to point my canvas flat like this. And I'll do this. I'll splatter it. You can splatter either all over the place or you can choose a couple spots. So let me show you a couple spots first. Because you can always add more to do whole thing, but you can never add less. If you already added something, you cannot take it back. This is a couple spots. Do you see I added here and here? I didn't add any here or here. So this is a couple spots. This might be enough for you. And might, you might look at it and be like, nope, it doesn't need anything else. This is good enough. If after that you feel like, no, I would like it all over the place, no problem. Just add more. Continue doing the same thing. And if you would like, you can do the same thing second round in um, light yellow color. It doesn't have to be just white. So I'm going to go with light yellow as well. But again, only if you're sure, because you can never take it back. Once you put it on, it's there to stay. So I'm going with my light yellow. I'm going to have lots and lots of splatter. In both cases, you have to have really, really watered down paint. It's very important for this. You see lots and lots of splatter. This is a rainy, rainy day. And just like that, it is finished. This is officially done. So after this, the only thing that is left for you guys is to sign it. So find the perfect spot. Don't forget to wash your brushes. and sign it. I'll sign it with white somewhere here on the dark section. Done. All right, started with umbrella too high. Can I add some kind of bottom to the person? Absolutely. So let me show you a version of what you could do if you started too high. So let's say this is our person, right? I'm just gonna extend canvas, let's say. Our canvas is bigger and I have more space here. So basically this would be a round waist, so you can do a skirt here. So now your person is wearing a dress. So you could do that for sure. Mm. 
Yay! No, guys? Um, if you would like to share your results, feel free. Take a photo, and whenever this video is done recording, just post it in comments to the video so everyone else can see how it turned out. Everyone who participated can take a look, and then we'll have a good collection of paintings. I love this. This is our favorite part, and we always look out for those uh, comments with photos because, well, we want to know how it turned out, right? Yes, exactly. That yellow makes painting alive for sure, 100%. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had fun. If you didn't get a chance to finish it today, the video will stay up on our Facebook page for quite some time, for a couple of weeks, probably around a month. And then we'll delete it and we will move it on to YouTube where it's going to stay forever. Yep. And guys, if you love our events, feel free to check out everything. We have lots of free events, more free events coming up in October. So feel free to go onto our calendar and take a look, go under events and see what we have coming up. And we also have lots of Zoom events. We have Zoom events pretty much every day and they're not crazy expensive. They're $10 and you get a video recording with those as well for about a month for your personal use. And you get the benefit of Zoom events is that you have life assistance, right? You can show your painting in progress because they're very small group events. So you can always just show your painting and get feedback right away. So that's why we do them and we love them as well. And if you guys had fun and if you wanna say thank you by tipping me, I would never say no to that. Absolutely no obligation at all. You don't have to. I'm happy to be here without the tips, but if you do, I would never say no to that. Uh, there is a link to, in the description of this video, there is an email for e-transfer, if you use an e-transfer, and if you prefer PayPal, there's a link for PayPal, feel free to use that. Yes, and Jody, I agree with you. Abstract is actually hard. Abstract is very hard. It looks like it's nothing. It looks like it's just, oh, it's just a couple of our strokes. No big deal, but it's hard. Abstract is very hard. So you guys did a great job. It's really hard to make abstract painting make sense and look good. It's easier to make something that has a shape or more realism look good. Yay, you guys are all very welcome. Does anyone have questions for me before I go? Feel free to ask if you do. I'll give everyone a couple more minutes to just ask whatever questions you may potentially have before I leave. And guys, we're, we're having a first um, oil painting tutorial in October, so look out for that. And we have a couple watercolors coming up as well and lots of drawing, if you're into drawing. All right, I don't see any questions. Guys, if you can think of something while the video ends, feel free to post it in comments or message us and we'll get back to you. Thank you all for joining me. Have a great night, everyone. Bye, guys.